launched his website, KevinKennedyBaseball.com. All right, let's get to the Dodgers. What should they do this offseason? I'd like to see them get a Lindor. I'd like to see them not clean house, but I think they've got a, you know, they had a great year, obviously, the best record in the National League. I get that. But I'd like to see them step up and go get a Garrett Cole or get a Steven Strasburg because Strasburg's going to opt out. You know, he's got four years and $100 million. He's going to opt out. The Nationals will probably try to re-sign him, but, uh, you know, Strasburg's going to make twice that if he does opt out. Uh, but Garrett Cole, I'd even like to see him get a Rendon. Rendon is just a great, great player. And, you know, move Justin Turner maybe to first base. I know that's being talked about. And Justin's had, you know, the leg problems and knee problems the last few years, and he's not getting any younger. Love Justin Turner. I'm just saying it's a logical move. Um, you know, and there's a couple of big, big free agents out there. And I'd love to see the Dodgers do that. They have pieces to trade, that's for sure. There's no doubt about that. I don't know if Cleveland would do that, though, for Corey Seager, is what I'm reading and, and hearing. Um, because Corey, I mean, Lindor is a 5 2 player. He's a fabulous player. And I think for the Dodgers, if you got somebody like that, and this guy's got a smile on his face, he's very media savvy, he's, uh, he's energetic, he would represent you know, L.A. and the Dodgers very, very well. So I can see why they would want him. But I don't think, um, if I, the names I'm hearing, I don't think would match up with what Cleveland would want. Why wouldn't they want Seager? Well, Corey, to me, they're going to, he's going to be moved eventually to third base. Um, his range isn't the same. Um, he's not, you know, he's going to get bigger and bigger um, in, in time. And uh, Lindor is a fabulous third, shortstop with great range. And Corey really, I mean, positions well, but he doesn't have the best range of all the shortstops. And I'm not going by analytics. Analytics will tell you that as well. I'm just going by the eye test. I can see that. But he does, he does, you know, set up well and they position him well. The Dodgers do a good job at that. But I think in time, Brad and Roddy, I think in time, like what has been said in years past, that he's going to be moving to the corners eventually. He's, I think he's going to hit better than what he did last year. I mean, he's a first ball hitter, and everybody knows that. And I don't think the Dodgers, you know, want, want him doing that as much. I mean, 51% of the time on the first pitch, he's swinging at it. And, and the league knows that. And so consequently, he's not getting as many fastballs first pitch because everybody knows that. He's getting breaking balls and, you know, start chasing them and, the numbers aren't going to be the same. So I think there's going to have to be an adjustment there. But I like Seager, and I think everybody likes him. But I just, you know, you're talking about Lindor. I mean, Lindor is one of the top three shortstops in baseball. I mean, he, he steals bases. I mean, he hits 30 home runs. Um, he's a 300 hitter. Uh, he's, he's a catalyst at the top of the order. Uh, he's got a rocket for an arm. And like I said, he's got great range. I mean, he's a true 5 tool player. So it's going to have to be a little bit more than, than Corey Seager to get him. And, you know, the, the Dodgers don't normally, you know, back up the truck for free agents. Um, and, right. and as you, you mentioned Lindor, you mentioned Garrett Cole. Do you, you see that happening this offseason for them? No, not really. If they want to stay under the luxury tax, I, I don't really see that. I mean, they've got such a great young core that came up last year. You know, Will Smith behind the plate, as we know, and Verdugo when he gets back healthy. I mean, he's got, this guy can play anywhere in the outfield. He's going to hit probably 25 home runs. You know, he's got more and more power. He's using the launch angle thing. Um, but he works the count well. He gets on base. He can steal a base. I mean, he's, he's a solid player. Um, Gavin Luck's got a chance to play, of course, in the postseason, and he's got some real upside. I mean, they're, just, they're deep with the young prospects, and I don't think they're going to move those guys. There's guys behind them that, that maybe they'd move. But even, even May – could see May being in the rotation. Even Gonsolin did a great job. I, I could see those guys being in the rotation. And, you know, uh, Walter Bueller reminds me of when I had Pedro Martinez in the 80s in the minor leagues. In fact, in 91, I had him. 91, and he came to me from double A. And he pitched six games, and I, he was lights out. I just said, wow, this guy's going to be a, I, I ended up trading for him in Montreal when I went to Montreal as a farm director. And fortunately, the Dodgers uh, let him go for Delano DeShield. So. Um, I just knew he was going to be what he became. And I think Walker Buehler is going to be that guy. He's at the front of the rotation. This guy's going to win two or three side young awards before it's all said and done. I think next year he's going to be at the top of that list in side young awards. So with Ryu gone, uh, the other names I mentioned, I think will be in the rotation. And boy, but if you got a Garrett Cole or somebody like that, that would just put you over the top. You know, you would just, um, you would win that game five is what I'm saying. You wouldn't, you wouldn't lose those games. And I know, you know, Bueller was the guy, and he started it, and he went deep. But I'm just saying, you know, when you got a guy like that, 
and he can take you all the way to the World Series and actually win it. And, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in Game 7 because he can't pitch in Game 7. But he got them back in the in the race because they were down two games to none, the Astros were, and then he pitched Game 5, of course, and won that. So they could have won it yesterday. Verlander stepped up, but he didn't. But I just think a guy like that, you have a one-two punch like that, I mean, that puts you – that's like what Verlander and Cole did. Put them right where they're at right now. And they may win tonight, and they may win their second World Series in three years. So I just think you have to get pitching like that, dominant, dominant pitching to go all the way. You're right about that, Kevin, but here's the issue. A guy like Garrett Cole, let's say he comes out and he wants five, six years, $30 million a year. The Dodgers aren't going to pay somebody for six years to pitch. Do you agree no, with that? they're not. Right. Yeah, no, they're not. And I, you know, Scott Boris and the Boris Corporation, I, I think Garrett Cole is going to command, you know, 38 to $40 million a year. So, you know, for Dodger fans listening to this right now, I mean, I'm saying this because I'd like to see them step up and do that. But at the same time, I know they want to be under the luxury tax. And they've got so many prospects down there that they feel they can go to the World Series anyway without a guy like that. But, I mean, he's the most dominant pitcher in the game. Last year when they had Machado and Bryce Harper out there, I didn't blame them for not going after Bryce Harper because of the outfield, you know, talent they already have. Right. That I already mentioned. Um, and Machado, you know, we saw Machado as a Dodger and they didn't really need him uh, with, with Seager and, and uh, Justin Turner on the left side. But this is different with the pitching. When I see pitching like Strasburg is going to be out there probably, he's probably going to opt out, like I said, and Garrett Cole. Man, that's different. Dodgers have always been, you know, a pitching-oriented organization. They've always developed well, and they've done that this time as well. But I, I haven't seen a guy like him quite as dominant with the fastball. I mean, maintaining 100 going into the eighth inning and then that slider and that curveball just off the table. I haven't seen that in a long time. And uh, I just think that if they could do it, it would be great. But you're right, Fred. They're not going to spend that. And, you know, Boris is tough because he's going to take it all the way yeah, who knows? He might take Garrett Cole all the way to spring training. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna command forty million. I guarantee he's gonna try to get forty million dollars a year for five years, maybe for seven years, and that would be what two hundred eighty million. I yep. mean, I, that's what people are talking about. But I'm just, you know, knowing, knowing Scott all these years, I just believe that's what he's gonna ask for. I mean, Verlander and, and Kershaw, these guys are thirty, thirty two, thirty three million. He's gonna use that and say, well, look at my guy. You know, my guy's worth thirty five to forty. He's not gonna even say thirty five. He's gonna say forty guarantee you and you know somebody might do it somebody just might step up and do it and i don't think it'll be the dodgers kevin kennedy host of sirius xm's mlb channel managed of course the rangers and red sox and his website kevin kennedy baseball.com skip thanks for jumping on we really appreciate the time today fred rodney anytime thanks a lot guys back at you skip there he goes kevin kennedy